Well, if you're a bit fed up with all the rain that we've seen in recent times, I'm afraid we are not going to see any end in sight in the near term. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is safe and well wherever you are. We continue to see the colder digging across northern portions of Europe, northeastern Europe, but the Atlantic continues to try and push from the southwest, and that will bring a clash of air masses and further outbreaks of heavy rain. Low pressure remains in the driving seat through the remainder of October, and it looks as if November is shaping up to be a pretty wet month as well here. Some shades of 2019 possibly start to show up. Of course, we've got the strongest positive Indian Ocean dipole since 2019, but of course we've got the El Nino in place as well. Now the multivariant Enzo index, which basically doesn't just hone in on the sea surface temperature profile of the Pacific, which looks on the face of it to be a fairly east-based El Nino, the, it also looks at the atmosphere as well, and there is some conflicting signals here between the ocean and atmosphere. The atmosphere in some aspects is showing a little bit more of a kind of Madoki uh, style El Nino in place, but of course the sea surface temperature reflection indicates a more east based El Nino. But I think with that uh, positive Indian Ocean dipole, it is looking rather ominous when it comes to um, you know the type of pattern that we're going to see over the next uh, several weeks. Now there is also some con conflict as well with regards to the stratospheric polar vortex. We are seeing some warming taking place over the Siberian side of the pole. And um, in, in all honesty, folks, that is quite an interesting signal. But personally speaking, and based on experience in, in, in years gone by, when you get a bit of a push of warming from the Siberia side of the pole towards the pole itself, you, of course, perhaps stretch the vortex, push it down towards north america and indeed the north atlantic but i've noticed that it tends to favor cold outbreaks more for north america so the eastern and central united states would not surprise me in the coming weeks uh, as particularly as we move into the month of november that we start to see outbreaks of cold um driving into the united states in response to that warming taking place at 10 hpa over the pole and it's pushing the vortex south. But unfortunately, that can sometimes lead to an increase in the, the, the thermal imbalance over the eastern United States. That forces a strong strengthening of the jet stream, of course. And then that jet becomes more powerful as it roars across the Atlantic here. So in turn, that could then lead to an enhanced, unsettled, firmly Atlantic-driven pattern for Western portions of Europe, I'm afraid here. And certainly the CFSV2 is hinting at that. If we look at the weeklies, this is the upcoming seven days, very deep negative over the UK, Ireland, and to the West, we've got a very strong positive. We've had exceptional warm temperatures over Southeastern Europe in recent times. Temperatures in the mid thirties in Moldova, uh, outstanding warmth for the second half of October, that's for sure in this region of the world. Nighttime temperatures no lower than 25 in Greece, for example. But you can see here the firm negative here in control. That is uh, a very classic either neutral or positive North Atlantic oscillation here. And that, of course, it suggests that we do have the continuation of the Atlantic in the driving seat here. Looking at the, um, the 8 to 14 day, again, you know, you've got the, the strong positive here to the south got the negative to the west and you've got that uh, straight westerly flow in off the Atlantic here so this is the period of course 30th of October through the 6th of November 6th of November through the 13th again you've got that uh, negative here um, near Iceland here so that is a a, a fairly uh, neutral to positive NAO signal here warmer than average conditions across the heart of Europe here um, and you can see here for the month of November this is actually the, uh, the, the the 10 HPA temperature anomalies and geopotential heights for the month of November. And you can see here that we've got the deepest negative here. We've got that little bit of warming taking place here, pushing from Siberia towards the North American side of the Arctic region here. 
And unfortunately, when you tend to have that uh, axis, uh, that the uh, core of uh, coldest conditions within the stratospheric core vortex, you tend to drive more of a, an Atlantic pattern. Even into the month of December, you can see here that we've got that warming showing up here, Siberia towards uh, the uh, the North American side of the pole here. That then forces the core of the, the polar vortex towards the Scandinavian side. And like I said, it, based on um, you know past occurrences, it, it does not necessarily uh, bode particularly well. Now, this is an interesting signal here for January of the CFSV2, indicating that we've got a weaker polar vortex, a, a much more pronounced warming, yes, on the Siberia side, yes, pushing towards the pole here with the axis of uh, uh, coldest conditions within the stratosphere towards the European side. But notice here that we don't have any particular dark blues showing up here. So this is the problem that I have. Now, there was a lot of research put into that positive IOD in 2019 that, um, you know, was it, for, it strongly suggested anyway that that strong positive IOD during the autumn of 2019 led to the uh, super powerful polar vortex in later January and, and, and into February of 2020 um, and drove a very, very mild pattern across uh, Europe, very wet pattern as well. And, you know, I'm really struggling with this one because we've got a little bit of conflicting signals with the El Nino. The El Nino wasn't present in 2019. So there's a lot of different parameters to look at. I have to then take into consideration what the Manjulian oscillation is doing. Now, that's indicating a phase eight and phase one at the moment. And it looks as if it's going to that for the winter season here. That would be semi-favorable favorable conditions for a blocking. Uh, over Iceland and over the North Atlantic and Greenland uh, during the middle portion of the winter and beyond. And of course, um, El Nino winters can tend to be colder middle and late winter as opposed to the early portion of the winter here. I do think that there is potential for cold outbreaks, even in December, depends on what happens within the stratosphere. Um, but uh, I am having a little bit of a hard time really trying to pinpoint exactly where we're going, even into the early portion of this winter season here. Now, you notice here, if we go back, kind of jumping back and forward, as per usual here, these are the 850 temperatures off the ECMWF. You can see here multiple areas of low pressure in play at the moment. Colder, kind of bottled up towards Sc uh, Scandinavia and northwestern Russia here. Very warmer um, through Italy, the Balkan region, Turkey etc you can see here as we play through this loop you've got that warmer or these multiple centers of low pressure trying to pull that warmer out of the subtropics towards the uk all the while we've got cold air coming in from an east and northeasterly direction but look at the amount of areas of low pressure involved in the pattern now the current low the main low driving our pattern is out to the west of the uk and ireland here this is of course 2100 utc tomorrow afternoon here we've got another center of low pressure that is uh, driving a bit of an easterly flow a chilly flow you notice here there's a little bit of a lobe of chillier air that's been peeled off scandinavia and is moving across the north of scotland here of course we've got that area of low pressure at 974 or lower that is uh, trying to pull this warmer out of the subtropics through iberia up towards the uk but of course, it's coming up against resistance. We've got one, two, three, four centers of low pressure in control at the moment here. As we play through these areas of low pressure uh, to the east of the UK is essentially stopping that, that cold air from getting drawn into the UK. And of course, you've also got this large circulation of low pressure to the west here. That also is stopping the, the westward progress of that cold air to Scandinavia here. So we continue with this battle, this fight between warm and cold. Notice here the cold almost makes it into the UK here by the time we reach the upcoming weekend. That centre of low pressure then moves bodily over the UK according to the ECMWF. And we continue with this kind of chilly but not necessarily downright cold easterly flow. Of course the wind circulating um, counterclockwise around that area of low pressure. And uh, of course we are pulling in that easterly wind now all the while we're going to continue to see the rain amounts mounting up in parts of eastern scotland northern scotland as well and uh, we are seeing a lot of rain we have seen a lot of rain 
I'm firmly confident that this October will be the wettest on record for Scotland, might be one of the wettest on record for the UK in general. And uh, it looks as if we're going to continue to see that taking place here. Now, this is quite interesting. As we move towards a uh, late weekend here, notice here that area of low pressure just dips a little bit further south and allows that colder air to come in over the top of that low. So we may introduce something uh, a good bit colder into the early and middle portion of next week. Long way out, I get that. But this is quite interesting. It depends on this area of low pressure that stays to the west through the course of this week, then moves bodily over the UK over the weekend. Does it get forced south with high level, with blocking to the north? That is going to be the question, but we could have a significant temperature difference between UK, Ireland, and eastern and southeastern Europe towards the middle portion of next week. Let's have a look and see what the GFS is indicating. Is it on the same, uh, on the same page as the, the UCMWF? Let's play through the loop multiple areas of low pressure. We've got a little bit of a, a, a tongue of colder air getting peeled off Scandinavia thanks to that area of low pressure. There's that main low to the west of the UK and Ireland. As we move towards the weekend, notice here, it, like the ECMWF, kind of drifts a little bit more towards the UK itself. We've got a new system that develops over southern portions of the UK and Ireland. That could be a bit of a wind uh, potential with that. We could see some uh, significant winds associated with that if that was to materialize and like the ECMWF it's indicating that these lows then get forced south and we open the door to something colder coming in from the north here so interesting to see that uh, overall solution taking place with the models if we look at the rainfall projections here of both the ECMWF and the, the GFS you can see that we do have plenty of rain to come, a lot of rain. Look at uh, western and uh, northwestern Iberia, through France, into the southern half of the UK, and as well as that, up through uh, East Wales, the Midlands, northern England. We've got a core of very heavy precipitation between now and uh, next Wednesday, which is the 1st of November. And watch uh, this space here with regards to eastern Scotland. We have got another area of significant amounts of rain falling. But up uh, through France, uh, parts of southern England um, and even in the western portions of Europe, Denmark, uh, we have got a significant amount of rain coming even down towards Italy, the Alpine region, the northern Bal uh, Balkan states as well here. Some very significant amounts of rain to come between now and the 1st of November. If we look at the ECMWF and see what it's portraying, and it uh, has some... It's, Pretty close, actually, to what the GFS is indicating, if you notice here. Very significant amounts of rain across northern Portugal, northwestern Spain, through central France, the Alpine region, um, northern France, possibly southern England. We could see some very significant amounts of rainfall as well. And uh, let's have a quick look and see what the snowfall projections are for the same uh, time frame here. So... Uh, because obviously we've got that cold air coming in from the north here uh, during next week, seen by both the models. So you can see here a little bit of a slice of snow showing up over far eastern Europe here. As we move into the early portion of next week, the ECMWF is indicating some at least hill snow uh, potential with this here. Looking at the GFS, and you can see here what it's indicating here with regards to the snowfall projections next week here. So it may turn a little bit colder into next week. How long that lasts remains to be seen, of course. We'll just have to wait and see what takes place here. Here's November off the CFS V2, 500 millibar geopotential height. You can see here a firmly mild and unsettled November to come, according to the model here. Uh, looking at precipitation, you can see here, that it is a very wet month to come in November. And of course, that is not good news considering how much rainfall we've seen. And temperature anomaly wise, no surprise here. It is warmer than average. Of course, the Atlantic is warmer than average as well, which will probably uh, boost that situation further. So that's it for today. We will continue to drive home the points with regards to the winter season. Be sure to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Lots of things coming up here in the channel, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.